All right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome, StarCraft fans. So this is one of my 1v1 builds with Zerg. I just wanted to be able to go over this build with you. And that way, you know, I share a little bit of my insight and kind of what I enjoy doing as Zerg. Um, this is my most common opener, so if you play me, expect this to be the opener. I normally do the safe fueling build, except instead of six, I kind of go for eight, and you'll see. And aside from that, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Razor is one of my favorite products. I have a Razor Naga and a Razor Gamepad. I've had them for six years. I mean, there's a little bit of wear and tear, but these products are still kicking and allowing me to stay at a good level in StarCraft, not to mention APM-wise. It just really, really helps to have that many keys on each hand so that I can actually separate tasks between right left hemisphere of my brain pretty cool huh so today I am fighting a cool dude with the one a diamond you know he's got that P finals logo it's pretty sweet um, you know, here I am checking for gas, doing the scout. I'm a little late on the scout. Uh, I wasn't too worried about getting there at the usual 40 or like sending the guy at the usual 40. I mean, it's not, it's not a bad scout, but he could have, he could have gotten me, but I got out. I got out and then now I went to go do second base. I usually do this right here. I always leave the one guy on the gas. This is important. And you'll see why it's important because now he has stopped my second, right? So he stopped my second, but then he sees the six links. So immediately right now, all of you are probably going gas, chamber up, evolution on the speed. Second base was going down six links out. Well, he's probably going to rush. And sure, sure enough, I decide, okay, you know what? He thinks I'm rushing, so I'm going to rush. He's going to prepare for this rush. I see the wall he's building. He's already getting ready for a ling rush. I'm, I'm going to ling rush, but I'm not going to do the traditional ling rush. And this is where I shine. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say shine. It's just one of my more favored early uh, harasses that I don't see a lot of Zerg using. I see them use it late game and such and I've seen you know guys decide to bypass walls with armies which I've done as well you know you morph like five lords into drop lords and then you you know go into a little corner in their base and you drop them all down and and then maybe you know with another overlord you slap down a a, t a tunnel and, and come on out so that's why the one guy is on gas the one guy is on gas so I have the ability to keep Bane's morphing at three minutes so in between three minutes and four minutes is my ideal attack time i get the eight lings right away so i can get them up in there and then with the other trickling lings i attempt to get more banes drop them in, in a spot he's not looking get those banes out get the lings up into his base be patient because i need to be able to cut him off see here come the lings now he starts running. I messed up here because I thought I clicked on the bottom probes and I did not click on the bottom probes. I, I, when I right clicked attack, they didn't attack the bottom probe. They went straight for the stalker and burnt a lot of banes. So this attack could have been better. And I'm, it's unfortunate for me to say, but this is one of my better drop lords especially against some of the top players i mean this is has has worked on diamonds and masters um grandmasters however you know good players can make this just look like a joke so this is something you want to be careful of now shift clicking shift clicking to make your stuff happen is so important Right now, my overlord is going into my base. He's dropping. I'm getting more guys there, so he sees like I want to be there. I wanted to just show him some lings down bottom, but he luckily didn't see any of it. He didn't see the lings down bottom. He didn't see the lings up top. Like, hey, <laughs> it's dangerous. 
So I'm running around now in his base. I've done a lot of damage to his probes. I figured let's go take a look at what else he's got. I mean, I could have run up the stairs. I could have caught a couple more probes. I still got what I needed to. Here I decide, all right, you know, let's keep the ling pressure on. He's got low probes. I'm only spending lings here for a few things. I need time to get my drop uh, lord to drop more before he goes and checks that corner again. So I ran the ling up by the mineral line. Morphed the two banes, and my intention was to go for his line. But I figured, you know, he doesn't have that many units out. I'll take out the units first. However, again, he does the cannon, and I should have killed that stalker, and I did not. That was a mistake on my part, because then I could have snuck these banes in had I killed that stalker. Um, instead, I'm forced to run now. i got to get out of there. Lo and behold, though, I'm on three bases. Well, getting on three bases. Two bases are pretty much up and running. I don't need a ton of gas, so I'm not worried about the gas. And I got some banes just sort of hanging out at his front base, going, all right, cool, he doesn't have... Um, any excess units in front that I have to worry about. He's spread out right now. He's trying to look up top. He's making sure I'm not, you know, looking for any any um, other openings with my drop lords. And that's what I want. I want him to be thinking he's dropping in up here. He's keeping with the pressure. He's, you know, he's probably thinking, and I'm hoping he's thinking, I've invested way too much in the lings. I'm not expanded. I'm not at another, you know, uh, saturated mineral line that I'm probably just trying to force out lanes and get more drop lords. So he's spending now for cannons. He's spending now for defenses because he doesn't have the ability to stop the drop lords. Now I mess up here big time. The first two banes only got one probe. The second two didn't get any, but once again denied mining time. It's pretty decent. I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't great watching all that mineral go to waste, but what do you do, right? You're just glad you got the guys off and that the earlier hit was successful. At this point, keep a couple links at home, start dealing with the gas, and think about where I'm going to go for it after this, all right? So I think, all right, I got a bunch of guys on the mineral lines, I'm exploding on my gases, and I need to saturate that third. As well as getting roaches out. So now I'm like, all right, let's send everything downfield. I did that pressure. He's got to have at least five to ten uh, units out now for defense. Mothership with pylon, I'm thinking. I was like, all right, you know, let's let's try the drop lord again. I did have confirmation on any of his cannons that were up, like, other than the one on bottom. But since I saw the one on bottom, I had figured he was going to make cannons. And I thought, all right, you know what, if he's making cannons and, and, I, and I encounter one here, I thought it wasn't going to be a big deal. So I'm going to go with the drop anyway. I didn't notice there was two. I saw the one cannon and I figured, oh, one cannon, my, my lings will take it out. But he had his mothership there with the pylon. It was not good. I ended up killing off those five lings that were in there and I got one left and I decide, okay. All right, I'll try to morph a couple of different units and start some early early pressure, maybe even go with the drop in the back, but I want to make sure I get vision because at this point, it's very, very likely he could come at me with DTs, two or three, and wreck my main base, you know. So I was worried about that. I was morphing the, the overseers, and he's chasing me. He says, I'm going to come find you. Well, like I said... Um, Really, this is one of my main builds. Uh, I didn't mention in the beginning either. When I killed that probe, you don't build the Bane's Nest or the Evolution Chamber until after you deny him sight. You have to let him see your base, let him think you're rushing, and then deny him that sight so you can get those up. And then he won't expect that Drop Lord with Bane's as quick as it has come. Most don't. A lot of guys are falling for it. Um, you know, not everybody, of course. Terran seems to be one of the most successful, especially when they put Marines in their mineral line, which for Toss, it could even be a couple of depths. That way you can surround your probes and links can't get to them. Um, but against Banes, it's, you know, it can be, it can be pretty horrific. And now at this point again, um, unfortunately, I use all army a little bit too much. I end up pulling that swarm host away quite a bit. But now at this point, just a couple of Ravagers, 
I got to dwindle down, force, force the energy on his mothership the most I can, not worry about losing too much, because at this point in the game, I'm way ahead. You know, he's, he's definitely got the ability to, to fight as well. So this was a big mistake. I was like, oh, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to get the surround. And then he stops it. And I'm thinking, ah, you know, he stopped it. I'm just going to wait for the shields to die out, throw a couple of Ravager cannon fire. And then he shoots another shield. And I'm thinking, all right, now he's starting to target my Banes. I don't want him to target the Banes. Those are the lifeblood to kill that army. All I have to do is target that one stalker and everybody else just will drown on the Banes. And I got the Swarm Hosts. For any additional units that only cost energy. Not not a bad deal at the moment. So he made a mistake here. He came out and he did catch a swarm host off guard. I don't know what the shade was for. If the shade was to kind of throw me off. But I figure, you know, I'm losing quite a bit. I don't want to lose my high energy units. I'm going to back them off. Let my roaches sit there and play for a bit. Bring them back. And then now I can still have those three roaches for a little bit of a buffer when I come back in and or morph them into Ravagers. And because this whole time I've been building back at home, and now I'm going on a fourth on the gold, I'm thinking I've got the pressure, I've sustained, I've done the economical damage, I've put him behind, and that's pretty much the game at this point. He does do, a, a, once again, good job on the energy with his mothership defending with the pylons, and I think, well, I got the swarm hosts, I'm going to start clearing out that area up there. I've got my overlords right next to me, next to those swarm hosts ready. And the reason I got some there is, is because if I clear this out and I put the pressure on the front and he tries to keep battling me at the front, I can always grab five, six guys, throw them up in the overlords, shoot the swarm hosts again, and drop in the back while I'm fighting the front. But he didn't have the front to cover. So again, this was just a little bit of a little build by me and um yeah have fun play more be a starcraft player be a starcraft fan it's a wonderful game love strategy and appreciate anybody watching thank you very much take care